Okay, so this next exercise is going to be looking at quantitative data. Uh, this time I want to focus particularly on uh, the difference between cross-sectional and time series data. We've looked at this uh, already in previous videos. We know cross-sectional data is specifically only looking at one period of time, uh, and we're observing different values for a variable across different elements or different categories. Uh, whereas time series data, we're looking at uh, that same information, but how it changes, or we're looking at patterns or trends across multiple time periods. Okay, so the first exercise that we have here, uh, it says specifically, we're looking at this information on the national lunch program in all three states, specifically only in 2011. So we're only looking at this uh, piece of information here. So right away I know this is cross-sectional because I'm only looking at one year. So then how can we draw this? Well, this is a bar graph. We start as, as always with our y and our x-axis. The, the labels here are absolutely critical because again if you have you know some bars that look like this that's all nice and pretty but it is absolutely meaningless there's no information contained in this little picture until you provide some labels so our y-axis this is going to be labeled with what is the information that we're depicting what is the name of the variable that we're looking at so this is number of participants And on our x-axis, we're looking at it across these three states. So this is the state. And here I have uh, California, Florida, and New York. So I've got all of my labels. Now we can go ahead and add the data. So uh, anytime I'm doing bar graphs, I always like to start with the largest value first. And in this data set, that largest value is California. So I'll allow that value to consume the entire y-axis. And then I can scale everything else against it. So here's my value for California. That is uh, 3.28. Again, these data labels are uh, not essential, but sometimes helpful. Uh, I'll also add a legend somewhat redundant as I already I already have all of my labels on the x-axis but uh, we can add a legend here too if we want to to make things uh, perhaps more clear now for Florida uh, value is 1.64 so roughly half the size of California half the magnitude so let's uh, let's make a bar that's about half the size 1.65 and blue this is Florida, and finally New York. Uh, not quite as much as California, but a little bit larger than Florida. So let's uh, let's just fit it in like this at 1.82, and add it to our legend. Okay, so now we've got a nice graphical representation of this cross-sectional data. All of my axes are labeled. I've got a nice color-coded legend, uh, and I've got all of my data points as labels. I should say that in in a situation like this, where we're drawing these uh, these bar graphs just by hand, and we're really not putting too much focus on on being absolutely precise, uh, in those circumstances, it's it's even more helpful to add these these labels on here just so that whoever is looking at it, whoever is reading it, can sort of gauge for themselves, you know, how accurate uh, are these. Um, so it's, again, just a little bit more information for, for the reader. Keep in mind, a big part of all of this discussion on descriptive statistics, on summary statistics, it's all about communicating the data. Now, we might have a large, uh, complex data set, and we want to communicate it as easily as possible. So here's, uh, here's one way of, of doing that. And the more information, the more concise the information, uh, the better that will be. So moving on uh, to the next part, I'm going to do a, a diagram here for time series data. So now we're looking at a, producing a line graph for multiple years. And so as soon as I see this, 
I know I'm dealing with time series data uh, and again we're still looking at the number of participants uh, in all three states so the, the start of this exercise is the same I'm gonna have my y-axis my x-axis again the variable of interest here is number of participants so that's what I'll have on my y-axis anytime we're dealing with time series data time always goes on the x-axis so here now I'll just add in my years 2011 12 13 and 14 and same as what we did with the bar graphs uh, again this is maybe just me you might find uh, another method that works best for you but I always like to isolate the largest value uh, and and start there and then everything else I can sort of draw it relative to that largest value so here that's uh, that's for California and it's in 2012 so that will be my first uh, data point so that's California in 2012 then let's fill in the rest so in 2011 it was a little bit less in 2013 it's about the same as it was in 2011 and 2014 uh, it drops a little bit so now we've got our data points and here we can just connect those dots and now it's very helpful if not imperative that you have a legend uh, to to differentiate between the different lines that are going to be on this diagram because I've got California now I need to add Florida and New York now producing bar graphs as I said it's helpful I find to start with the largest value uh, of the of the whole data set next I would suggest starting uh, your next line with the lowest value so that then you've got some range uh, in your table that, that you can work with so my smallest value here now is uh, Florida in uh, 2013 so let's start Florida down here then uh, 1.64 it increases a little bit in 2014 and 2012 and 2011 are both about the same so nothing much going on with with Florida okay and add that to our legend and then finally we uh, can do our last uh, our last state will be New York and now that's going to be in the middle clearly all of those observations are much closer to, to uh, Florida uh, than they are to New York so let's uh, sorry they're closer to Florida than they are to California so I'll start at the lower end uh, here we'll look at uh, starting here 182 so there's 182 down a little bit to 180 and we're on a downward trend all the way there's 170 and there's uh, sorry 172 and there's 170 so then here I have New York somewhat of a downward trend okay so there's uh, there's how we can now illustrate time series data uh, I've got multiple elements that I'm looking at across time now we can observe uh, relative differences between each element so I can compare California to Florida to New York in terms of, of their their magnitudes and I can also look at some of the trends you know for example if I were to isolate this last section this most recent data well I can see that California appears to be trending down New York appears to be trending down but Florida appears to be trending up so we can start to see a little bit more uh, of what's happening in that data set okay so that's a, a bit of a comparison on cross-sectional data producing bar graphs and then here we've got uh, similar data but over a period multiple periods of time so a more appropriate uh, graphical illustration is our line graph okay I hope that helps thanks for watching